We speculate that AI will achieve near human level intelligence within a few decades. And when we say near human, we don't mean the same as human. And the book is a lot about how humans will coexist with this artificial intelligence. And in particular, what does it mean to be human? Dr. Kissinger got involved with this because he concluded that the age of artificial intelligence is of the same significance as the transition from the age of faith to the age of reason, where humans hundreds of years ago learned how to be critical reasoning beings. The impact of having non-human intelligence that is with us, controlling us, changing us is not understood and we're not ready for it as a society. Remember that this is technology that we've never seen this combination before. It's not precise, it's dynamic, it's emergent in that when you combine it, new things happen, but most importantly, it's learning as it's going. So you get all sorts of problems. Imagine that the system learned something today, but it didn't tell you or it forgot to tell you and what it learned was not okay with you. Imagine if your best friend for your kid is in fact not a human, but a computer and your kid loves this computer, in the form of an AI assistant or what have you, or a bear or a toy. And the toy learns something and it says to the kid, hey, I learned something interesting. And the kid's gonna say, sure, tell me. But what if it's wrong? What if it's against the law? Once if it's prejudicial? We don't have any way of discussing this right now in our society. Do you think that when we're talking about, for example, the exposure of young people to these algorithms we don't understand, do, do governments need to come in and say, actually, we need to significantly constrain what the exposure needs to be? Well, we just ran this experiment in the form of social media. And what we learned is that sometimes the revenue goals, the advertising goals, and the engagement goals are not consistent with, with our democratic values and perhaps even how the law should work, and especially on young minds. We worry a lot in the book that AI will amplify all of those errors it will, of course, do amazing things as well, which we talk about. But a good example here is we don't know how to regulate the objective functions of social media that are AI enabled. Is the goal engagement? Well, the best way to get engagement is to get you upset. Is that OK? We don't even have a language in our regulatory model to discuss it. We don't have people in the government who can formulate a solution to this problem. The only solution we can propose in the book at the moment is to get people beyond computer scientists in a room to have this discussion. Dr. Kissinger tells the story that in the early 1950s that the groups got together once the Soviet Union and the arms race began to develop the notion of mutually assured destruction and deterrence and so forth. But it wasn't built by the physicists. It was the physicists working with the historians and the social scientists and the economists and so forth. We need the same initiative right now before something bad happens. Who's at the forefront right now that you think are talking constructively about this issue? There's a handful of people who have written very clearly on these issues, but there's no organized groups. There's no organized meetings. No one is debating the most consequential decisions that we're going to make which is how are we gonna coexist with this kind of intelligence? And I wanna be very clear that we know this intelligence is going to occur in some way. We just don't know how it will be used. 30 years ago with the advent of the internet, we knew it was gonna happen, but we certainly did not know that once we connected everybody in the world, we would have all these problems. Um, I was fortunate enough to be the head of the National Security Commission for the Congress, looking at artificial intelligence. And we came back with lots of recommendations, some of which have been adopted, more funding, uh, research networks, uh, working with our partners, making sure that we, the democratic countries stay, uh, stay aligned, staying ahead of China in their semiconductors and so forth. There is no coherent group in our government or at least in our civil society in the West that's working on this.